Well, there is of course an other digital control method that you can use and it's states based control. We will not elaborate on this method in this course, but it is of course the subject of a completely separate teaching unit. We'll just give a few reminders and we'll make some comparisons with the RST controller. The state space controller is based on a state space description of the system. In continuous time, this is what it looks like. And in the vector X, well, you have the state of the system. So, of course, we are in a framework of digital control. So we work in discrete time. And what you can then obtain is a discrete time state space description. It is very important to see since, well, in this case, again, this will be a direct digital design that you should base your control on a description in discrete time that takes into account the zero order hold mechanism. And this is indeed what we have done in the course of state space control methods by computing this discrete time equivalent description as follows. So if you go and review this discrete time state space description, you will see that we have taken into account the zero order hold mechanism. Well, the state space control is a very simple control law of this form. So here you have the state feedback and here you have the set point feed forward. So what is done is that the poles of A minus BK are placed in certain regions to obtain performance. And you can have a look in this course in section five on performance in the S domain right once you have determined k n is determined in such a way that well in closed loop the static gain in the well, transfer matrix from r to output is an identity matrix well in discrete time everything is the same except that everything is based of course on this discrete time state space description that takes into account the zero order hold mechanism as we have seen we have the same type of control law again we have to make sure that the poles of the closed loop system and these are the eigenvalues of these matrix over here are in the unit circle of course but in a region of good performance and we have looked at this region of good performance again section five but then the subsection on performance in the z domain once you have obtained k you can obtain the feed forward gain by imposing that the transfer matrix from r to y as a static gain that is an identity matrix the formulas are different than in continuous time and again i refer you to the course of state space control methods to have the details we had seen that if all state variables are not available for measurement what you can construct is an observer right and these state space variables might not be available for measurement because it's impossible to measure them or because it's too expensive. So this concept of observer is well valid in continuous time and in discrete time and it allows you to estimate the states that are not available for measurement so you can either re-estimate all the states and this is then a full order observer or just estimate the states that are not measured and this is then a reduced observer so again i'm not going to go into the details go and have a look in the course of state space control methods well here is a kind of conclusion 
and it involves well state space control and RST control. These are the two main controller structures that we have seen this year as far as digital control is concerned. You can say that for single input, single output systems, all methods, so state space, RST, but other control methods such as Agazini's design, deadbeat control, and so forth can be used. RST control as an advantage because it has a two degree of freedom controller structure and it is possible therefore to also place closed loop zeros. Okay, so this is a main advantage of the RST controller. In the multivariable case, all methods become difficult to implement except the state space approach. So I would say that for well, multivariable systems, the state space approach is the ideally suited method. And as I've said, well, this state space approach is covered in the course Advanced Control 1 and in the teaching activity state space control methods.